Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Welcome to episode 10 in this highly modded Galileo's Planet Pack installation of Kerbal Space Program 1.3. Today we are playing around with the next mission. We're going to head up to IOTA again. You can see here we are using the Strategia mod. Uh, we can basically unlock one of these strategies. So we're going to pick the IOTA program, unlock that one. You can only activate one of these at any one time, but this is going to give us uh, basically a few hundred thousand in funds uh, by the time we actually get back. Uh, not only from the funds we pick up here when we accept the mission, but also uh, in extras as we actually complete some of the milestones for the mission in general. So uh, I've obviously gone into the uh, Research Development Center here. Just want to unlock a few things. Uh, in particular, I really want to uh, get some of the better solar panels that we can uh, retract back in because I'm sick of having disposable ones. And uh, I just want to unlock a few of the other parts. For some reason, I had uh, a lot of issues with my GPP installation uh, fairly recently. I tried to install updates with CCAN, and of course, everything went to all sorts of craziness. And I had, I had to basically uh, reinstall all my mods from scratch. So I may end up here with a few extra mods that perhaps I didn't have before. Uh, and there's the solar panels there. I just wanted to unlock those. Um, Oh, and it, actually, this uh, little salamander command pod, I really want to play with that. It's, uh, you know, I, I really want to keep using stock parts where possible, but uh, there's some really cool parts that I want to just play with anyway, so it's a bit of a mixture. I also want to gra grab some landing legs there as well, so we'll grab those. Um, and yeah, I'll just have a bit of a play around with a few other things. Oh, there's an orbital telescope there. Um, that would be cool. We'll see if we can pick up some new science readings from that. So yeah, we'll leave the facility, head into Mission Control, and you can see there um, the uh, the mods allow us to uh, pick up a few other IOTA missions. So we'll grab that science data there, surface from IOTA, we'll explore IOTA as well. And uh, yeah, so that Strategia mod uh, just gives us a higher probability of picking up IOTA-based missions when we have got that particular contract unlocked. So I'll head into the Vehicle Assembly Building, and first of all, uh, one of the requirements for this mission is to basically uh, transfer a, a Kerbal, or a Galeon in this case, uh, from one vessel to another. Now you do have to have a totally separate vessel. So what we're going to do is just send a little dummy vessel up. We're just uh, building something very simple, a simple lander can, something very light. I'll put on one of the new solar panels there that I've just unlocked. And uh, yeah, it's it's basically going to be a self-piloted vessel. It's going to have the probe core, and uh, I could pretty much get away. I think probably just with having one stage here underneath with the Terrier engine, that should be plenty. I think, and then probably just one SRB, one of the massive SRBs underneath. And yes, I think that will about do it. There, we'll just add some winglets to the bottom of this thing just to keep it nice and stable on the ascent. Because as you are all aware, probably uh, you can't actually throttle down the SRB. So having uh, having just a little more control down the bottom there with those winglets is going to help quite a lot. Um, and look, that I think that'll probably do it. Uh, we'll get rid of Burberry out of the lander cam. We don't want to send anyone up, and we are now time lapse launching this vessel. Basically we want to get this thing just up above 150 meters per second before we start banking over quite hard. Because this is a SRB stage, a solid rocket booster stage, um, we just basically have to let this thing run its course. So the ascent profile isn't going to be perfect with a vessel like this, but it is a very cheap little vessel and we're only doing this so that we can get a vessel uh, up around uh, IOTA so that we can basically do an intercept in a second launch and uh, basically transfer our Kerbal from one lander can to another, or one command pod to another. So yes, we are there up around uh, 100 meters per second there at our apoapsis mark, so we're firing our Terrier engine stage here. Um, this is basically going to get us all the way up to orbital velocity, just pulling out that uh, solar panel, also extending our antenna so that we can communicate back with Gale. And we're just now around 1800 meters per second in our velocity there, almost orbital velocity. And as we get up to our apoapsis, we're just going to uh, basically circularize just as we hit that apoapsis mark. And there we go, we have got a fairly stable orbit already going there. We're going to set IOTA as our target, and we'll see now that we have an inclination here. That is actually quite high, it's up around 8 degrees, and that is largely because uh, we don't get to launch from the uh, Space Center 
on the equatorial plane. It is just a little further north. So whenever we launch into orbit, we always have a slight inclination. So always need to adjust that there. Um, that's pretty much close enough, just setting up our uh, trajectory here to set up an encounter here for IOTA. And just slightly tweaking that. I'd like to come in to just have a fairly tight orbit, I guess, around IOTA. And we almost have an empty stage here. So seeing as though we... Uh, we really don't want to leave the space junk around. I'll just slightly lower the orbit, release that stage, and then fire our final stage there, which is just driven by two of those little spider engines. Now, they don't have a lot of thrust, so uh, I am time accelerating while making these burns. This is almost as painful as uh, doing burns with a Nerve rocket motor, but they are very efficient for me because essentially I don't need to actually uh, carry the mass of a large engine. So, uh, yes, look, this is quite a a good way to actually get up around IOTA cheaply. Um, and yes, just doing a second pass now, just to raise our orbit right up to IOTA. Uh, and that's going to uh, basically give us a pretty good encounter. We still have half of our fuel left. All we need to do is a fairly small burn just to drop into an IOTA orbit once we get up here. So we'll just time accelerate and uh, basically let our vessel fall away from Gale. And uh, yes, interestingly, I think I'm still having issues here with the solar panels not pointing towards the right star. And actually, I should explain that for those of you that aren't familiar with the Galileo's Planet Pack mod, there is actually two stars in this system. There is the Syro star, which is the main star, or Cairo, Syro or Cairo, however you pronounce it. And there's also the Granis star, which is one that's much, much further away. Uh, and quite often I have troubles with my solar panels not pointing to the correct one. For the moment though, we are just hitting our periapsis mark there and we are doing our retrograde burn to pull our small little test vessel here into a fairly low orbit there around IOTA. And I did a very bad job there of circularizing this well, so I'll just uh, quickly uh, raise it up so that our apoapsis is at 50 kilometers. And I'll just, uh, just to make it nice and circular, I'll time warp up to our apoapsis and just do a very small burn just to raise the periapsis to also around 50 kilometers. And there we go there. So look, that's a, that's a pretty good little test orbit to be in. So I'm not 100% sure yet who I'm going to bring up here. It will more than likely be Burberry as our pilot, along with a scientist perhaps. And uh, so yes, we have Gale there in the background. You can see there that my solar panel is, as I said, refusing to point in the correct direction. You can see there, it's just pointing backwards. So one little trick I have actually learned is you can contract the solar panel, and if you redeploy it, it uh, will then uh, basically readjust itself and hopefully point towards the correct star the second time. So onto our main vessel now. This is a much bigger vehicle. You can see here it is absolutely loaded with scientific instruments. Instead of using the regular command pod for the stock game, we've instead um, basically popped on that salamander command pod. And we've also got all these science instruments loaded on, including the new orbital telescope there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So yes, we've uh, we've got Burberry. We'll also grab Bob, our scientist there, just so we can reset the experiments and we'll launch this thing. Uh, as I said, this is a much larger vessel. We can collect the material study right off the pad, basically. We can always pick that up with Bob here shortly. And of course, Bob will be able to reset those experiments so we can run them multiple times. Our engine of choice today is the LFB KR Twin Bore liquid fuel engine, which I actually don't use very much in the game. I don't know why. It's quite a nice little engine. The thrust of this engine is quite a lot higher than the mainsail engine, so that makes it the largest, uh, most powerful engine of this size. Uh, the ISP on this one is just slightly lower though than the mainsail engine. The reason that I picked this one is just because the mainsail by itself just didn't quite have enough thrust to weight to effectively get this vessel to orbit. So we have obviously already dropped those fairings. They were set up using the clamshell method and I had just set them up to drop in three parts. So we are now completely out of fuel. We will let this big uh, booster there drop back into the atmosphere. The actual booster itself was quite cheap, so I'm not even going to attempt to recover that. Uh, we'll just extract out our three solar panels there. We now can retract those when we need. And we can just remember, of course, to pick up all of our science instrument readings whenever they pop up there using the X Science Here and Now mod, which is, uh, if you haven't used it before, a very, very handy mod. It means you don't have to keep individually clicking each instrument. 
So you can see we have uh, a very high apoapsis there. Uh, we launched that way so that we could basically ensure that our main booster would burn up on re-entry and smash into the ground. It also gives us quite a high apoapsis so that we can come out and uh, circularize fairly high. And this means we can do our inclination change as well at a fairly low velocity. Only 1,000 meters per second we were doing there when we did this inclination change. So our inclination there now perfectly matches that of iota. So we just need to make sure that we raise our periapsis so we are now not going to smash into the ground along with our booster. And this just basically now keeps our space clean of debris, which is just something I like to do rather than just manually deleting those parts from the tracking station. So just uh, setting up our burn here to match up with our test vessel. So because we already had quite a high apoapsis to start with after our booster ran out of fuel, our burn here is only around 400 meters per second, just under 400 meters per second. And uh, just prior to heading to our burn there, uh, we're just picking up all of those science readings from the uh, from the orbital telescope, which is really handy. We can also grab Bob here out of our vessel, do a little spacewalk. He's just going to pick up the science from the material study there and also our uh, mystery goo unit. And he can actually restore both of those experiments now. And uh, basically that means that we can rerun them as many times as we want and he can just board and uh, we can continue on our mission. So again, there was another few reports there in EVA we hadn't picked up before, interestingly. And we're just basically doing our quick burn here now up to uh, meet up with IOTA. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about today is the issues that we have in regards to life support. So we do need to make sure that our Kerbals are happy on their journey. Our life support there, you'll see we've got a couple of the uh, little pods on the side of the vessel and also on the top. Those pods are there to ensure that the Kerbals will remain happy for, uh, and, well, as many days as they need to remain happy. With those pods enabled, we have 20 days of hab time there, which should be more than enough. We also have plenty of food attached to those pods as well, so that should be enough to keep our Kerbals happy. And as we enter the sphere of influence, of course, we are just picking up all of the science instruments that we possibly can. And again, Bob coming out here to reset some experiments and recollect those, uh, those samples before we uh, head in to uh, meet up with our little uh, demonstration test vessel here. Now, for those of you that haven't intercepted with a second vessel before, the process seems fairly daunting, but it's actually quite simple once you understand the basics of it. The first thing we need to do is drop ourselves at least into an orbit uh, so that we're going to keep coming around. And we want to make sure that our descending node or our ascending node is set to zero. So uh, we can do a small burn like I just did there at the descending node to make sure that our inclination difference is zero. Before doing that, you just need to make sure that you have set your target vessel as the target, otherwise it uh, is probably probably going to be doing inclination changes on the actual body itself. And then it's just a matter of uh, doing a slow uh, retrograde burn or prograde burn just until you can get either the pink or orange markers there to uh, intersect with each other. So you just want to get them as close as possible. And you can see there, uh, as we come around on our next orbit, we are going to be basically bang on our target vessel. So then the only thing left to do is time warp around until you meet up with your vessel. And uh, if you make sure that your nav ball is set to target, then it will show you the relative velocity. So we're doing currently 31 meters per second towards the target. And if we keep on slowly pushing the anti-target marker there against the retrograde marker, it means we're going to keep coming in quite straight to uh, to the target. You'll see it as, it, as we come in, it curves away. That's okay though, because uh, we have now intercepted. We wipe off all of that target velocity, and there we go. We're, we're in the dark, so uh, yes, what I did was just waited until we were in the light before I took this next bit of footage. But we can now get uh, our Kerbal out and uh, head down to uh, basically hop in to our other lander can, and that is going to complete our Explore IOTA mission, which was basically to do a spacewalk and to transfer a Kerbal from one vessel to another. So there we go, we should have done that, and there you go, we can see it there, we have got that all perfectly complete. We only have two more missions to complete, which is to grab some science data from the surface of IOTA, and also to plant a flag on IOTA. So rather than doing a large EVA to get all the way over here, which is a very long distance as you can see, not, I uh, just thought I would intercept again with our little lander can vessel. We'll hop Bob back out and he can head back over to the salamander lander can uh, hatch door and board. We can now basically come down and land on IOTA, which is actually a very, very easy body to land on. The gravity on this is 
probably something between Minmus and the Moon in the stock game. So uh, it's a bit heavier than Minmus, but uh, you know, not as heavy as the Moon. So yeah, again, just picking up all of that wonderful science. Um, you know, when you've got um, some of these mods unlocked that give you some extra science experiments, there's just loads of science that you can keep on picking up. So just makes it a little easier to unlock all of the uh, all of the different tiers in the research and development center because there are so many more tiers with the mods that I've got installed. I'm not actually sure why it is that the uh, profile pictures for Burberry and Bob there in the bottom right are blacked out like that. There must be some issue with that Salamander lander can that's not actually giving us a profile. Just reducing that velocity as we come into touchdown. Again, we are going to be uh, touching down fairly easily. The gravity isn't that high, so we can uh, basically just wipe off the final bit of velocity just as we touch down. There we go there, and we can now pick up all of this wonderful science there. We have the magnetometer scan, we have the laser scan, EVA report, seismic scan, material study, and yes, one of our main mission uh, criteria, of course, is to plant a flag. So uh, along with picking up all of our surface samples and things, we'll pop down, plant that flag. We are on the highlands this time. There we go. Highlands, we'll name that and head back up to our lander cam. And that's basically the end of our mission on IOTA, really. We didn't have to do much more. What I will do again is just hop out and we'll reset those reusable uh, experiments, the material study and the mystery goo unit there, just in case we can get any more science from them on the way back. I don't think we can. I think we've probably picked up most of what we need. So we'll reboard there and we are ready to take off again. Uh, we head basically towards the 90 degree mark on the nav ball. We don't need a lot of thrust to get off this thing, so we can pretty much immediately turn horizontal and burn straight towards the horizon. So this is the first time we've taken two Kerbals all the way to one of the moons, so we needed plenty of food, we needed that uh, habitation space. And yes, the fact that we only have 20 days of hab time there basically means that we need to get back as soon as possible. If we don't, basically those Kerbals in our command pod are just going to go on strike and refuse to do anything. So we need to just set up our escape trajectory to make sure that we are exiting the uh, moon here of Iota in a retrograde direction so that uh, we fall back into Gale there and just slightly adjusting so that our uh, periapsis is around 40 kilometers. That means we're going to be able to re-enter on the first attempt. We do have remaining just a little bit of liquid fuel. We're not going to need that, uh, so this is slightly over-engineered. If you want to download this vessel, you can grab it from the link in the description of this video. You would, of course, need to install the mods that require the parts that aren't stock parts here. So yes, just grabbing a few more orbital telescope readings there as we just pass into the top of the atmosphere. We're going to retract those solar panels so they don't burn up. Just close that uh, material study bay just in case. Sometimes closing it up gives it a little bit more tolerance for heat. And uh, yes, we've ditched that stage. They're going to burn up in the atmosphere and hopefully we should be able to get in without any of our very highly sensitive science experiments actually exploding. You see our temperature gauge there at the bottom of our vessel is uh, is coping quite well. It isn't getting much further than half there. And yes, we are already down well below orbital velocity, just approaching, uh, well, a landing spot here, which I think is quite nice. We have two parachutes on the side of this thing, which will launch. And uh, yes, in retrospect, I probably should have put them higher in the vessel, so uh, the vessel didn't spin around like that. That was kind of crazy. It was a very good thing that our reaction wheel was strong enough to pull the thing back upright. Otherwise, uh, yes, we would have been in trouble. So again, pick up some final science readings just before we actually recover our vessel. And there we go, I think there's been a fairly successful mission. We have completed all of our contracts. We have uh, earned around 600 science points, which is fantastic. That brings our science tally back up to around 900. And what you'll see here actually after we close these few windows is we've got these little final frontier mission summary patches, which is quite cool. I haven't actually played much with this, so I don't know how these affect the game from this point on. That's going to be interesting to play with. So we can close that. But uh, another thing that's quite interesting is you'll see because we unlocked the IO to program, we not only get to complete these contracts like we normally would, but we also get to have uh, extra fund bonuses for each of the milestones. You can see that we got an extra 89,000 for that first one, 56, 59, 44, so that's fantastic. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second and hit that like button. All of your support is just awesome. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. If this video has earned your subscription, welcome to the channel. And for all my existing subscribers, thanks for being awesome. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have the playlist for this series. Please do give it a watch if you are new to this particular playlist. In the top right is my latest video regarding my Lego build of the Saturn V. And in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you by some sad little robot. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.